So before we dive into this video, if you have not seen my game instance video, then I highly recommend you see that. And also look at the materials playlist and look at the outline material. Um, and you can download that for free. Now, if we look at our actor, so we've just got, I don't know, 10, 11 of those in the world, 10 of those in the world. And it is a static mesh which has um, two material elements. So I've got one for the wood. I've also got a plane here just as a floor that just has the wood material on as well. But let's look at our main protagonist, our actor, our chair actor. If we come into here and look at the blueprints, now the, that's all that's in here. Um, what this is handling really is the on begin cursor over the static mesh. Now, when you've got the static mesh, if you come down in the details panel, then you have your events drop down here, and we're using on begin cursor over and on end cursor over. So when you drag those out and you want to start using them, they won't just work out of the box. You also have to enable mouse over events and use this node in conjunction with your player controller. Get player controller into enable mouse events. Then it works. If you forget that, nothing else will work. The events won't trigger. Okay, so coming back out if we look at our fabric material which is material element one on the chair static mesh you'll note that we have our texture sample and that's just being multiplied by a color parameter so just created a color by clicking and holding down four and then converting that to a parameter and naming it color so I've just made that white to begin with, but when we create a dynamic material instance, it means that we can change that vector parameter to any color, and we use that to, to great effect. So that enables us to make that material dynamic. Other things, so we do have a do we? Yes, we do. We have a, a material parameter collection. Now, material parameter collection, I have just got the, the only one I'm actually using here. Let me just check that. Yeah. For this video, I'm just using this vector parameter, which is called outline. And the default value is the pink, but we override that immediately. So it's just there as a vector parameter, so we can access it whenever we access the, this material parameter collection. Um, there's a video on material parameter collections as well, which I encourage you to watch. Coming back to our drag drop. So this is my first exploration into drag drop, and I followed the very good series of tutorials by Matt Wadstein. He's done four versions of dragging, dragging and dropping with payload, without payload, the use of simple, which this really is. Um, and I encourage you to go and watch those. I'll put a link below to those as well, because they're really, really good. But I've just used it quite simply to get the effect that I wanted. But I'll cover what that entails. So my main widget which i am adding to my screen in my setup actor so here i don't need that anymore um there we are the drag from widget is added to the viewport set show mouse cursor obviously using our get player controller and then i'm setting the input mode to game and ui for my purposes kind of coming out of that once we've added that widget to the screen this is the widget that we're adding so in here is my logo then if you look here on the left hand side i've got a horizontal box which has 10 
draggable item widgets and we'll show you, I'll show you that one in a moment but for example here if I just do that you'll see that there's 10 items in there but I'm just filling the box because that's what I want it to look like visually there's nothing in the graph at all so if we come to our draggable item widget you'll see that there's no canvas there's just an image which I have set a size to but actually I've overridden that now because I'm stretching to fit but if you had a graphic specifically that you wanted to use then you could um, obviously set the size of those now I have bound the color to get color and opacity and the reason I've done that here on get color and opacity I have a linear color the linear color is a variable that's local and then if we come to the event graph you'll see that I'm just on construct setting a random color um, as mentioned in the explainer video so because this fires 10 times on each of those child each color is different so on event construct I am just creating a random color um, into that linear color parameter which is then bound to the render color and opacity of that image now what else is going on in this graph so we'll come back to this in a minute because this event is called event on drag cancelled but we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit and that's the bug fix that I pointed out in the explainer video trace complex that box needed to be checked anyway let's look at what else we have here in our functions so you'll note that under functions we have on mouse button down and on drag detected now if you've watched the Matt Woodstein videos you will know that you need to come here and go to override and select on mouse button down that's the first one that we used I can't see it I'll click into it that's redundant now it's a bit of spring cleaning as we go so what I'm doing is I'm getting the linear color of this object and then I'm writing it to the game instance I've got a linear color reference there that I'm just writing the current color that gets overridden every time I drag another color out of the horizontal box widget from here every time I drag one out that variable in the game instance gets overwritten to the current color now this is the node that triggers the detect drag if pressed the detect drag gets triggered when I click the left mouse button and that gets returned now the second function here is another override so here and it is on drag detected so on drag detected doing a few things now I was trying I ran into a problem actually it's not quite working how I want it to you see because when I drag the color out I wanted to have the drag visual of the droplet which I have but then I still wanted the mouse to interact with the world and by dragging it out it seemed to disable that because I wanted that outline to give me as the user a bit of feedback that I'm aiming in the right place basically <laughs> so that when I've got the graphic under my mouse and I'm trying to align it with one of the chairs in the world I wanted the chair to show an outline color reinforcing that I'm in the right place before I let go and then apply the color that didn't work I thought that might work so I took that out I then did also try to have another line trace but that didn't work either so I haven't worked out how I can interact with the world 
once I've got a drag operation in progress. So if anyone knows that, please, please, please let me know because that would be ideal. I've tried a few things, but I haven't got my head around that yet. If I work it out, I will um, add a little appendix to this playlist. Okay, so on drag detected, like other widgets, we create another widget. Now in my drag image widget, I just have my droplet. So it's just a PNG that's white and I am coloring it because I have bound it to get color and opacity. So if we look at that and then I'm going to the game instance and getting the current color that we wrote when we dragged from the box. So now when I drag that off, the droplet is going to be the same color as the box I dragged it from because we're using that current color. Okay, so that hopefully makes sense. That widget, which I'm now dragging around the screen with my mouse cursor, becomes that default drag visual in the right color. And that is it for the drag detected. Now, on Matt Wadstein's playlist, he then shows you how to drag that into another widget in the HUD. But I didn't want that. I wanted it to interact with the world. So this is where I go slightly off piste and combine a few other techniques to get the color information passed to the static mesh material, the fabric aspect of that material. So that's where things will differ now. OK, so if we come back to the event graph, then we'll see that we have an event on drag cancelled so that's a standard node um, in event node and you need to delay to be able to perform a line trace or sphere trace i chose a sphere trace i tried a line trace and because of that problem of me having the droplet under my mouse as i'm releasing if the chair is a long way away or I might just miss it slightly. So I thought I'd be better off using a sphere trace to give me a bit of aim tolerance, basically. But by giving a slight time delay, it means that once you've canceled, it's not trying to fire the sphere trace immediately. You just, it doesn't work. You need to have a slight delay before carrying out your sphere trace. So this node takes your mouse screen position and projects a line from that point forwards. So really powerful to kind of convert a position from screen into the world. Now I'm being quite <laughs> dramatic. I've got 100,000 units that I am taking that world direction and multiplying it by before adding it to the start world location so that we give our start and end locations of that sphere trace. So this is quite sort of standard. So you have world location, that becomes a start. But then to put the end, you need to take your world location, which is your starting point, and add to it, basically. The world direction is the same as a kind of forward vector, but it's named slightly different here. Um, and that, in effect, is one by default, one unit. So we need to multiply it by the distance that we want to project into our world. Get that distance and add it to the original location, which then becomes our endpoint. So I'm doing a radius of 0.3, so not massive sphere trace, but just gives me a bit of tolerance, as I say. I'm using the visibility channel. And trace complex, that was the bug I was getting where I was dropping the color droplet onto an overlapping mesh if there was one in the background, but because this sphere trace was in effect tracing simple, it just drew a big rectangle, big rectangular box around the mesh rather than a tight complex collision. So by tracing complex, it just meant that if any of the two chairs visually overlapped and I tried to color one that was behind, the one in front wouldn't accept the, the um, droplet. 
Anyway, so sphere trace by channel. So we have a return value. So if that is true, then do this. So we have our out hit. We break our hit result. And then we want to make sure that we are working with the right actor. So hit actor, we take as our object into a cast. So we're casting to chair blueprint, which is the name of our blueprint here, chair blueprint. So we're seeing if our line trace is hitting a chair, basically. And if that's true, i.e. not failed, it carries across and we're getting the static mesh, creating a dynamic material instance of element one. Element one is the fabric material. So we'd, I'm leaving the wood in, in this case. So if you wanted to change the wood, you would have element index zero, for example. So the linear color, which is the one that we have um, created when we have randomly selected a color on construct when we're adding these child widgets to this parent. So that linear color becomes the set vector parameter value of the material, static mesh, element one material, which is the fabric, linear color, which is the random one that we created, and we are changing that set vector parameter value. And then similarly, I am taking that linear color and updating the outline parameter in the demo material parameter collection. So that idea of updating the drag color to the material, but then also the outline that is the rollover feedback. So just going back to our mesh, our chair, just to reiterate this point, because this will make sense now. So once we've changed the color of the material, I didn't want to write it to the game instance because each color of each chair can be different. So I wanted to be able to take the color from element one, so I'm getting back to parameter value of element one color, because that's what the parameter is in the material. And then I'm just setting the outline parameter in the material parameter collection, so that when I do have my on begin cursor over, it sets the rendered custom depth to true and therefore in the color that we have taken from the fabric material on a per instance basis. So there we have it, droplets affecting the fabric. So it's been quite fun creating this. Um, and getting the hub to interact with the world. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. So hopefully that's of use. Um, if these videos are giving you some value, then please do like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So thank you for your support.